Hey guys, Richard at Reefs.com, and this is another episode of Reefs at ACI Aquaculture. You know, I'm looking at it over here, and then I actually didn't see it on that side, but I'm looking at the corner of this, and I noticed a whole bunch of pectinias. I know, right? These are one of my favorite type of corals. Mine too. Now, before, I think last year or so when I last visited, I gave you face emitter pectinia as a seed. Is one of mine in there, in there um, somewhere? Your seed is the big one back there. Nice. And I got that one, um, with a piece that we grew out. No, Jake's, the one I got from Jake is in the quarantine system in the back. Okay. I just haven't figured out where I'm gonna put it yet. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and I've got, some of the colonies that I had are grown out. I got a space invader now that's like this big. Wow. Just, they just started taking off and yeah. every time I break it, it grows even faster. So all these little fragments, we actually launched space invader bacteria for the first time in ACI's history. Very um, awesome. Because we have enough of it. And then I got that other beautiful pectinia right next to it that is blowing my mind with yeah. the colors. I got that from Aquashella in Chicago mm -hmm. um, two years ago. I got one fragment. Now we've got four little miniature colonies of it. Yeah. Super unique. I um, really like that one on the, on the, on the yes. order to the left. Oh my God, it's like a lime green, yellow, gold, and brown, red, and like, Stupid, isn't it? Oh my goodness. And I'm toying with Blasto Wellsies to see if I can oh, find wow. them as well. I, wow. I, I don't think I'll be able to, but I don't They're think They're such it's a viable. slow, slow growers, aren't they? We're playing around. Yeah. You know, I might be able to figure out how to make them grow faster, but you know, it's all- Your usual way of beat them and see how well they'll do? <laughs> all the fun part of what we do, man. You know, just uh, enjoying enjoying the beauty of the animals and learning what they, what they require. I mean, it's not just set them and forget them, you know, if you're a hobbyist, yeah, set them and forget them and just make sure your tank parameters are good. But if when you're farming like me, mm -hmm. I get geeky with it. You know, I, I, I you know, we, we adjust our amino acid doses to think that maybe we're gonna get difference in growth out of certain corals. Mm -hmm. But when you have a smorgasbord of corals in the same tank, adjusting amino acids tends to mess with one and not the other. Right, right. So we went back to not playing with that. I've, I've had my ups and downs with trying to help figure out how to grow plastos, but yeah, it hasn't worked yet. Figured out one day. So the question is, is, is this one big tub just uh, individual system by itself? No. Or? This, this, that, that, and the sump are all the same. Gotcha. All the water goes from the sump all the way up to this end, flows all the way through. We have six two-inch bulkheads mm -hmm. that flows water through there, two three-inch drains down there, same way with this side. Six bulkheads, oh. all flows through. Oh. Less plumbing, less issues. The only mm -hmm. thing that's really not the best scenario is we can't really isolate the tanks. Mm -hmm. to clean one out and not the other, but yeah. honestly, um, now, let's, let's the way we run here. our, our systems, we don't really do a whole lot of, uh, we don't have to do a lot of cleaning because mm -hmm. we have so much water flow in there, we get yeah. very little settlement. And when we do get settlement, all we gotta do is pick one rack up and suck the crap out and mm -hmm. we do that once a month. Now, tell me about this tub. What is, what is this entail of? This tub here was the first tub we put corals in on this farm system. Um, I put a uh, acro to test, mm -hmm. um, and I put um, a handful of LPS to test, and once I knew they were doing good, that's when I put my torches in that tank. Uh -huh. We've got the Jason Fox um, Midnight Dynamite Monopora Hirsuta. Mm -hmm. um, we've got the uh, ACI Plasma Blast, the classic Milka Stylo, mm -hmm. the ACI Sunbeam Ostera, a smorgasbord of acros that don't even have names. Some of them do. I don't even know half of them. Um, I think one of my favorite ones is the Jackson's Rainbow that we got. That is uh, um, tenuous, right? Yes. It's right there, the blue one right Unbelievable. there. Unbelievable. Yeah. My Walt Disney was this big. Yeah. I was getting ready to cut it and actually put commercial Walt Disney on the market. Yeah. Ian hit. The whole entire thing melted. Oh, no. I think I caught the colony over there. Yeah. Um, I was one of the ones that broke my heart really bad. You know, it took me years to get that colony to grow out. I could only I got imagine. It, I got it from a place that grew it under LEDs. And when yeah. it went to my metal halides, mm -hmm. if you grow a, metal, a coral under LEDs in all my experience, and you put it under metal halides, it stunts them, and they won't do shit for a year. Really? It took a year for it to start growing. Hell, I got the cherry bomb right there. Mm -hmm. July last year, from an LED lit only aquarium. It has not done anything. It's basically the same frag with a little puddle. Now, Interesting. now that I know it's doing well and starting to grow a little bit, I'll break it and then mm -hmm. it'll just go nuts. But all the ones that are really small mm -hmm. were all gotten from somebody that grew them under LEDs. 
they're taking a long time to adjust the metal halides, but once they adjust, it's like they're put on steroids. That's awesome. They hold their color fine. Actually, yeah. I think they look better. <laughs> <laughs> Cinnamon Pallies, the Firestorm Maze Brains all the way back there, the Bubblegum Maze Brain. Is this the one that you're just releasing again? Um, we've had it on the market now for probably three months. Right. But yeah, that was the one that everybody wanted. It was in my sump in the back. Mm -hmm. It was the big colony right in the middle. He has a treasure trove of uh, <laughs> in the back of the sump. That sump is <laughs> unbelievable again. Yeah. Um, oh, and I said I can't grow soft corals. Why do I take you to the QT and show you the freaking, um, the, the, the insane mushrooms mm -hmm. that we're growing? Really? Um, we saved some really unique mushrooms um, three years ago when Indo came back. Mm -hmm. They were single polyps. Way overpriced. Tried to sell them. Couldn't sell them. Wow. Mm. Some of them are like this big around. Really? And I uh, look looking up for them. They're called, uh, one of them is called a Frankenstein mushroom. Okay. Another one is called a. The one with the, like a pink rim around it. The, the Frankenstein? Yes. Yeah. I've got a bunch of those. Nice. And another one is called, um, oh my God, I hate the names. You know me. I can't stand it. What the <laughs> heck is it? A beautiful mushroom. You'll probably know it as soon as you see it. Um, um, but it, I mean, literally, they're like this big around. Yeah, yeah. Amanda took some macros of them the other day. Mm -hmm. Rainbow. I mean, wow. and they're massive. They're like the size of a teacup saucer when they fully open up. Um, That's and crazy. then they migrate and drop babies all the way along the line. Really? I've got from one polyp, we probably got 30 back there, and some of them are only this big, some of them are only like this big. So, wow. This is a new release coming up this week, but. We only got the blue, the whites on. I can turn the blues. You can, no, 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 no. This, this is perfectly fine. It looks it looks beautiful. Over here, Acros, you could really appreciate them in under the white lights. hundred percent. Here's some uh, Ghanis that we're toying with, learning a lot about Ghanis and their growth. You know what really tripped me out is you know like these are like used to be considered as a rental corals. Yes. And how far we come so like we could frag and just grow into huge colonies like this. You know. What is that? This is the ACI Raspberry Delight Mont or Alveopora. Uh huh. We learned something about Albies and Ghanis that grow in a columnar form. If you let them keep growing up, mm -hmm. it just dies. Now, why is that so? Do you think because of the light's not penetrating towards the bottom? Well, I look or... back at pictures I've gotten from my, my suppliers over in, over in Indonesia and over in Australia, mm -hmm. and when they find the huge fields of column growth Ghaniaporas, only the top three inches of the, of the stem is alive. Even at the edge of the colony, mm -hmm. you still have these thick stalks going up and it's dead mm -hmm. and only the top of it is alive. So it makes complete sense. Mm -hmm. This here is Alveopora. Yeah. Then you got, I put these over here not knowing whether they were encrusting, whether they were column shape growth or what, but we learned that this one here is a column growth. And look at it, that's a Ghani. Right, right, right. 24. It's not dying because it's unhealthy. Yeah. It's dying because of, probably because of shading, mm -hmm. and it's just nat natural for it to do this. So I'm learning as they grow up, I need to just start cutting them so, and fragging them and just manipulating their growth. Right, and right. then once the end user gets it, they can watch it grow into a beautiful colony and grow up, grow north. This right here. Let's see if we get this one right. What is that? Well, Connie. it's the citrus fruit. Ghani. It's ACI citrus fruit Ghani. Right. You're exactly right. You know what everybody calls it? Bernard Pora. But that's not a Bernard Pora. No. Yeah. Not even close. Yeah, we had this but conversation. Everybody before. calls <laughs> these things Bernard Poras. They're all Ghani and Poras. Yeah. Bernard Pora, I can show you what they are. Mm -hmm. I've got some stupid rainbow ones growing in the back over here. Um, but it's going to be kind of hard to get to. Um, <laughs> Do we need a do you need a water boost to get into yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Um, but then we got this beautiful coral here called Turbinaria heronensis. Hero, hero, hero. You know, you know this this actually has a story. Um, geez, I think this is like a, maybe 15, 16 years ago. Uh, I only like you know I, I never really did, like I, I was fond of this coral, but Jake turned me into this turned me into this coral. Yep. And this is a hero coral, and you should definitely get it, Richard. It's coming to Miami. Pick it up. So I went to pick it up, and man, it's like I start to appreciate some of his unique taste in coral. Yes. You know? Yeah, he was just like me. Everything and anything that nobody wanted, I wanted. Yeah. You know, it didn't matter if it was brown or gray. That's a in very interesting shape of growth. Okay, what, what you I'm, need to I'm, know. I'm more like, I'm, I'm used to seeing more of a plate pattern okay. like that. Do you know that this 
and this. Uh -huh. All of these heroes in here all came from the same piece of coral that I imported from Australia. I believe that. They're all the same exact DNA, mm -hmm. all growing right next to each other with different growth patterns. Is that not cool? That's awesome. You know, and like it's finding out why they do that, and it's just, it's, it's such a joy to me. It's you know, I, I, keep, I do what I do, man. It's like, I think that's why we like get along so well, because we geek out something like this in the middle of the night. Like, he, called, he used to call me around like midnight. Richard, I just grabbed, I just got the most amazing shipment. I was like, Chris, you get shipment every week, every day. <laughs> and you say this every time. He's like, no, 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 but this time it's different, I promise. <laughs> Dude, does everybody know what this is? Mm -hmm. Turbinaria peltata. Okay. See what it is now? It's dunking up Samia peltata. Turbinaria or pagoda cup is no longer turbinaria. It is dunking up Samia peltata. And then how were they able to determine that? DNA. If you look at a turbinaria peltata, uh -huh. old school, yeah, yeah, yeah. and look at the size of the polyps, okay. and then you look at a turbinaria reniformis, okay. or a turbinaria bifrons, mm -hmm. or a turbinaria herinensis, mm -hmm. the size of the polyps is completely different. The structure of the polyps is completely different. Right. I always knew it was different. Mm -hmm. but I was just waiting for the right people to come along and actually reclassify it. But that is a... 100% aquaculture mm -hmm. from a frag pagoda cup. It's funny because it actually does look like a cup, doesn't it? <laughs> Is it chalice? Drink? You can put your beer in it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Will it remain green afterwards? I don't know. <laughs> so I moved it off to the side a little bit. Yeah. But Jake's corals, I mean, the, the growth of the crystal experiment is yeah. spectacular. How long did, did this take to grow from a frag? Six months. Six months. It's funny nice. because we were, when we, this first came to U.S., we were you and I were talking about it. The Manila. Uh, and it's, it's the Manila spy is. I mean, it's a weed, mm -hmm. and it um, so well. I'll never be able to get the money for it that I used to. But mm -hmm. um, I'm not worried about that. I'm just happy to see Jake's legacy continue on yep. with this beautiful coral, turbot or er, monopora carinata. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice coral. Yep, it grows really well for me in my tank as well. Uh, I don't know. I, I, okay, you we sold a, them like, like crazy flag, in the beginning, like, and I don't sell them hardly at all anymore. Really? It's like everybody, all the stores that had got them from me, it probably came in broken into pieces. Mm -hmm. They probably kept the little nubs for themselves to, to, to grow out. And, and they grew well. They grew well. Yeah. Yes. Like, I see that you have this Sonic the Hedgehog. Do you have the golden one that Julian has in his office? I have the, the golden Julian one. got from me. Is that right? I have oh, so you have it. back. Yeah, okay, I got okay. tons of it. Good. I got a pink one too. I was about to give you one if you didn't have it. <laughs> but this is this one here. This oh, is probably wow. the best all these tank zoanthids. for growing our zoanthids. Um, I got two polyps of Grand Masters from somebody. I think I got 30. Um, what? My Bauer. Yeah. Dude. Look how much it grew. So good. Oh my gosh. It grew like crazy, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. Look at the yellow one out there. Jesus. Look at the one with the yellow and the orange and the red. Like and right the, in the center. Yeah, it's my freaking God. stupid. It looks like an old school, I don't want to say Aiken Lord, uh, Micro Musa Lord. <laughs> like, like that yeah. one, the color. It's unre unre it unreal. It looks like a rainbow Aiken. Look, I've got a Bauer Banky collection. Right there. Oh I know. my God. And that one. I know. Oh my gosh. Everybody's been going nuts over me. And then I learned how to tissue frag them. Jeez. So we don't actually always take a polyp. Uh huh. And they grow into, they get a full polyp growing on them in time. Um, it's a really, really unique uh, method for fragging, but it's not, I haven't mastered it yet. Here's another new zoo that we, we released a couple of months ago. We sold out in a matter so of days. Right. My God. It's called the Lorax. Uh-huh. So Super bright. Super freaking bright. Well, they're closing up on me, of course. Because you... <laughs> I got Stratocaster, Stratospheres. Uh -huh. I got Hallucinations, Predators. I don't know the names of all these daggone things, but there's so many of those melters. Oh, my God. Yeah. You see, last time I was here, this was just set up. It was just water. Yep. And you had those uh, the Marco rocks in the back, and that was it. Yep. My God. I'm growing out the rainbow chalices over there. Uh -huh. They seem to really like it over there. All the way over there, you can see the Bernard Porus. The red and the green, the yellow. I see that. That's just insane. Now, are they like um, are they aggressive as some of the other like type of Ghanis? They're nasty. They will I they figured. will whack everything. Now they don't bother Ghaniaporas. But anything but, else it touches, it, yeah, it will... Yeah, they pretty much whack everything. Yeah. I've got a um, spawned baby torch down here growing. 
Really? You see the uh, green stag? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you see the rock? Look yeah. at the gold torch right in between there. You see it? Right. I see it. I see it. There is a baby torch coral that grew from a larva, from a spawn, right in this tank. That is but so cool. But it had to happen down there, yeah, make its way they... through the empty tank over here and into my sump when the socks were overflowing. It's wow. the only way it would have made it. Now, this is a spot that not many people get to see. Yeah. This is the, the holy grail of ACI aquaculture, for me at least. This is, the, if you look at the back section here, David, if you could turn around with me, this is his pride and joy the section of the farm. Flagship farm. This is the first farm system we ever had. Yep. This is the last system we put in over here. You, I, you that guys wasn't didn't have here. this. You guys okay, didn't have this. Take a look at this. This is where your head's going to spin. Because I've been hoarding some of the most insane corals for a long time, and I'm putting everything through a major QT process before they go anywhere close to my farm. I've got a torch coral over here that's making everybody's head spin, yeah. even myself. He's not open right now because he knows it's going to be nighttime here soon. <laughs> Look at that torch. I thought it was bleached. It's been here for two months. That looked like an anemone. And it's a freaking torch coral. When it's open, it's open like the guy next to it, and it's just flowy and it's yellow. David, look at, like, look at this one. <laughs> the fluorescence on it, it looks like an anemone. You know where I've seen that kind of fluorescence before, besides anemone? Like uh, Jordini's. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Certain Jordini's, they come in yes. that, that highlighter yes. color. I'm like, no, I got a cat up there right now that's not quite that good, but it's looking good. That is insane color. And you said that, how long has it been there like that? Uh, two months. Two months. Jeez. I mean, some of the, all these torches, I mean, we add stuff to it constantly. Um, but we know what they've been through. Mm -hmm. um, that over there is also blowing my mind. That is supposedly a Yaya mensis. Yeah. I don't think it's Yaya mensis. I don't think it's Divisa. I think it's another new species. Because mm -hmm. that's Paradivisa. Right. My micro collection just grew. Woo. That one right there has got me. Yeah. Unreal. That one there is badass. But my mushrooms that I was talking about. Oh, I'm still, I'm still looking at that, that thing right there. <laughs> With the bower? Yeah, man. I know, it's ridiculous. Uh, you know, I, I love those fleshy corals. Look at that over there. Mm, amazing. Yeah. You were talking about this mushroom earlier. This mushroom... If you got to see this thing in a macro, yeah. it would blow your mind. That one and this one and the ones that are over there. You know, this looks awfully similar to the, the, some of the mushrooms, the redactus, that are found in Palau. They had really? A, yeah. I think Biota had it one time and they were calling it mango something. I don't know. That, yeah. Have you ever seen a lava lamp look like a real lava lamp? They're blue with gold dots. Oh, I see it now. Uh, they're, they're all over the place. Wow. I like the mixture of colors, like everything is like growing it in together, yellow and orange. Yeah, we tried to make some Frankenstein um, stylus and alias. It's turning out pretty good. Yeah. Oh, here's the other um, Cyphastria. The silver. Silver and yellow. Over there is some unique chalices, along with some unique um, Ganiastrias. Yeah. Favias, Dipsastrias, a lot of overgrowth. Mm -hmm. Right on the egg crate. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, but check out these platygyras. Oh, my goodness. No, not platygyra. No, they're not platygyras? Dipsastria. Really? Dipsastria veroni. Oh. What people don't realize is, and I didn't realize this either until Amanda and I were looking at them, this right here yeah. is how they separate their polyps out. If you look close, that just formed in there. There's a okay. mouth on that side, a mouth on this side. There's a mouth there, a mouth there, a mouth over here, and a mouth over here. Right. This will eventually grow up and connect, and you'll have individual polyps. It's Dipsastria also. It's Dipsastria uh, veroni, yeah. or old school name, Favia veroni. So let me ask you a question. Does it have a stingers like platyjaras, or like is it is it like a, is it behave they like all Favia? have stingers, right? But they don't. But you know, they don't usually like. <laughs> no, they don't extend at all. They're like, you know, like that big. Gotcha, gotcha. That's beautiful. Yes, isn't Man. it? We haven't figured out what we're going to name it, but Amanda just posted it the other day. I saw that. Yeah. In my mind, I, that's why that's that's why I pointed it, because for me, I thought it was Pleiadjara all this time. I was like, wow. Nope. 
Yeah. It's yeah. gorgeous. That's, that's and those Pactinias. Goniastria, uh -huh. which is very similar to Platygyra. It's Australiensis. Yes. But um, I've got Platygyra. Um, where's my, oh, the Firestorm Platy Maze is down there. Yeah. I've got Iron Man and um, Aliens, uh, Alien Eye, or Aliens Blood, or, yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> now let's go check out your main farm yeah. over here. Man, every time I come here, it's, it's uh, this uh, what farm, a treat. This farm is, like, depressing for me because you're seeing it after it's coming back from the issues with Ian. Yeah. Three days without power, we had power running, but the flow was not where it was supposed to be, and we ended up having issues with a lot of acros mm -hmm. and some other corals. And um, it didn't even get, wasn't even noticeable until days after the power came back on. Mm -hmm. And I actually couldn't even come back and look at the farm. I had to have my guy that takes care of it pull the dead corals out, and uh. then we took photos for the state yeah. 62 colonies, all about this big. Well, some of them are littler, but uh, yeah, uh, it, 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 it's yeah. Knowing knowing your passion, I mean, I, I could, I could only imagine how you felt. It shed some tears. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Let me go. Oh, so David, if you look over here, all these things on the wall, there is no empty space. Everything is growing something. What an effective way of farm coral. You want to know a coral that nobody's going to, whoever gets it and allows it to grow mm -hmm. is going to be completely blown away yeah. when it actually starts to form the way it's supposed to grow. Which one? Favites complanta. It comes I from haven't... one area in the world, Northern Territory, Australia. Yeah. It grows in branches. Branches? It's a branching favites. This is branching Favites or Favites complanta. Mm -hmm. You can kind of see what I'm talking about there with that little nub growing out the side there. Is that going to yeah. branch out? Don't know. I actually put some tiles in the sump to see if we can actually get it to do the real branching like it was when it came in. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. But um, I'd love to be able to show a mother colony shot of us growing it out as a branching Favites and yeah. then be able to offer frags up so people can actually see what it's going to do. Right, right. Um, very, very cool coral. You know what's also really cool? Your Red Sea Swamp. I know, right? Yeah. So did, were you able to, uh, was James able to uh, classify, I, I did this, identify this I, as a different? It's funny, I just talked to James a couple of days ago about uh -huh. that and uh, the tests got all messed up. Oh no. Nothing ever came from it. Yeah. And they were sacrificed for no, no good reason. reason at that uh, point. That's and a he bummer. was really upset about that. Uh, yeah. Um, because this one, I remember you first imported this as a Red Sea, and they were like, this, you, you were telling me, like, you know, and then James. Well, no, I knew it was Squam Squamacina. Uh -huh. Because we knew we were going to be getting some Squamacinas on the shipment. Mm -hmm. and but you knew it was a different, different. Uh, yeah, that's Squamosa right next to it, the big yeah. boy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and they're distinctly different, especially in the shell and the growth mm -hmm. and the color pattern. Um, Even the They are yeah. similar, though. They're very similar. Mm -hmm. I think they require basically the same requirements that a Squamosa does. Yeah. I mean, we give it high light, we give it low light, and they do extremely well. Either, um, either way. Yeah, and you know, Julian just told me he lost his in January. He put it in the pond back yeah. in July, it was doing uh, amazing, and all of a sudden it just died. And he's uh, really upset about it, and I'm like, I have one, but I'm not, depart I'm not parting with it because I don't know if anybody else has one. Mm -hmm. Then I just got to, uh, I talked to a couple of people I knew that got them, and um, one of the shops in Gainesville still has one. Yeah. Um, so he's gonna send me some photos because I don't think anybody else has them. I have a still. You have a Squamacina? Yeah, same one. Good for you. <laughs> At least I know there's three still alive. Yep. You know, maybe I'll give I'll I'll give to Julian as a for his lagoon. Because uh -huh. you know he's such a good friend. I yeah, would, I would Julian's want to. amazing. No, yeah. no, I mean, if, I know if anybody ever has anything bad to say about Julian, they don't know Julian. Yep. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. The, one of the best souls in the industry. The Godfather. Absolutely right. And I know if, if anybody will take good care of it, I know that's him. So. Oh, yeah, you know it. I mean, you know, I mean, look what he's done for Elegance Corals. Look at his passion for corals and what he's able to do. And now what I'm able to do with the University of Florida, mm -hmm. the study we're doing on, on, on Elegance Corals, and possibly being able to get down to the pathogen that's actually causing it and maybe come up with an even better treatment. Yeah. I can't wait. The you know, study's over. We got two more weeks to finish it and done deal. You know, mark my words, I think... 
Giordini. You know, like you know, a lot of times, like Giordinis are, are often frowned upon when it's imported. I mean, they're beautiful, but I mean, they don't last long term in our in our care. Sure. For, the mo for the, a lot of a lot of hobbyists. Hobbyists, you know? you're right. Hobbyists. So you know, like just like Onyoporas and Albioporas, you know, like we will learn more from it, and hopefully that we could we're able to keep it much longer term, long term. Agreed. Agreed. I mean, I'm excited to see what we what we learn from there. I would love to be able to farm cats one day. Yeah. Giardinis. Mm -hmm. I'd love to be able to do it, but I, I don't know how viable that would be. But when there's no corals coming into the country, and you got a big cat that you can take five frags a year off of, well, guess what? Chop, Supply chop, chop. and demand. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> you know? It still tripped me out how you guys were fragging, fragging Giordini's. I'm like, what? Because yeah. like, you, you flipped it around and you showed me, like, this was fragged. I'm like, no way, it can't I, be fragged. Flip. I was like, oh, okay. I think I have like 40 frags out there right now. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, geez. <laughs> I still have the original one that you gave me long years ago. Oh, I'd love to see the growth underneath. It's probably growing sure. like a cone now, isn't it? Yep. So amazing. You got to send a picture of that to me. Will do. I told you I had a big, uh, a big uh, space invader, right? Yep. Oh, okay. Isn't that awesome? Okay. Very cool. Yeah. That's the one we just break branches off of and it heals over in two weeks and starts shooting new branches up. Yep. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. This has been a tour of ACI Aquaculture's main coral farm. Not the wild corals, but every single aquaculture pieces that Chris farms personally in this farm. Chris, thank you so much for showing everything thank here. You. What a treat Always it is. Always good to see you, buddy. What a treat it is to come here after so long. I know. And just drool over, all over these corals again. <laughs> thank you for having us. I look forward to coming up here again and making more content with you. I can't wait. Ready for it anytime, my friend. Just let me know and we'll coordinate it. We'll make it happen. Yes, sir. Thanks for watching again, guys. Thanks, Have a great guys. day.